Today's lesson, I want us to answer the question, what does it mean that Jesus is the Son of Man? What does it mean that Jesus is the Son of Man? You see, Jesus is referred to as the Son of Man about 88 times in the New Testament. And in fact, the Son of Man is a primary title that Jesus used when referring to himself. Let's look at uh, Matthew 12, verse 32. The Bible says, And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. You see there, he's calling himself the Son, the Son of Man. Let's also see Matthew 13, verse 37. The Bible says, He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. We can go on and on. Let's see maybe two more verses. In the book of Luke 12, verse 8, the Bible says, Also I say unto you, Whosoever shall confess me before men, him, the Son of Man, also confess before the angels of God. Yeah. And maybe, let's see, what does John has to say? Uh, let's look at John 1, 51. The Bible says, uh, And he said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter you shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Okay. Son of Man. Son of Man. Uh huh. So, we understand that the only use of Son of Man in reference to Jesus, spoken by someone other than Jesus, came from the lips of Stephen as he was being martyred. Do you remember what it says in uh, Acts 7, 56? He said this. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. That was Stephen. So, we understand that Son of Man is a title of humanity. And other titles for Christ, such as the Son of God, are overt in their focus of his deity. Son of Man, in contrast, focuses on the humanity of Christ. And God called the prophet Ezekiel Son of Man 93 times. Have you read that? And in this way, God was uh, simply just calling Ezekiel a human being. He wasn't calling him like, like God, no. Because Son of Man is simply a perisphatic term for human. Jesus was truly a human being. He came in the flesh. Remember the Bible tells us in 1 John 4, 2 that uh, hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. You see? It was just saying that Jesus, uh, he was a man. He came, he became a man. Because uh, the Son of Man is a title of humanity and the second person of the Trinity eternal in nature left heaven's glory and took on human flesh becoming the son of man born in a manger and the bible tells us that he was despised and rejected by mankind remember isaiah 53 verse 3 and the bible continues and tells us that the son of man had no place to lay his head son of man luke 9 58 and also we see the Son of Man ate and drank with sinners. Matthew 11 verse 19. We can go on and on and on. We see again the Son of Man suffered at the hands of men. Matthew 17 verse 12. And this intentional lowering of his status from King of Heaven to the Son of Man is the epitome of humility the epitome of humility. Let's look at Philippians 2, verse 6 uh, to 8. What does it say? The Bible says uh, in Philippians 2, 8, uh, 6, 8, Who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant, 
and he was made in the likeness of man and being found in the fashion as a man he humbled himself and on and on and on and on all right so we understand that son of man is a title of deity mm, yeah yeah i know you're only waiting for the son of god no the son of man is a title of deity because Ezekiel might have been a son of man but Jesus is a son of man as such Jesus is the supreme example of all that God intended mankind to be mm-hmm. the embodiment of truth and grace let's read uh, John 1:14 the bible says and the world was made flesh uh, sorry the word not the world <laughs> The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Okay? And uh, we beheld his glory, the glory as of the begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So we see that uh, in him and this son of man is all the fullness of the deity. Colossians 2:9 it tells us about this it says for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the god ahead bod- bodily mm-hmm. and for this reason the son of man was able to forgive sins matthew 9:6 it says but you may know that the son of man has power on the earth to forgive sins then says he to the sick of the palsy arise take up thy bed and go on go unto thy thine house because uh, this same son of man is also the lord of the sabbath <laughs> mark 2:28 i have so many verses to read therefore the son of man is also lord of the sabbath remember that and also the son of man came to save lives luke 9:56 and i quote for the son of man is not come to destroy men's life but to save them Also you can read Luke 19 verse 10. It it will explain much more. Let me let me also tell you something else about this son of man. This son of man he just also came to raise uh others but also he rose from the dead. Do you know the son of man rose himself from the dead? So that's a proof that is going to raise us also. In the book of Mark 9 verse 9 it says and as they came down from the mountain he charged them that they should tell no man what things they had seen till the son of man were risen from the dead. So this son of man would raise himself from the dead and execute judgment. Look at John 6:27 the same son of man will execute judgment and I quote John 6:27 he says labor not for the meat which perisheth but for that meat with which endureth unto the unto everlasting life which is a, which the son of man shall give unto you for him has God the father sealed so we see also that at his trial before the high priest Jesus said I say to all of you from now on you will see the son of man sitting at the right hand of the mighty one and coming on the clouds of heaven Matthew 26 verse 64 and this statement immediately ended the trial as the court accused the lord of blasphemy and condemned him to death you can go on and see verse 65 and 66 about the same so we understand that uh, The son of man is a fulfillment of prophecy because Jesus is claimed before the high priest to be the son of man was a reference to the prophecy of Daniel 7:13 to 14 which says I saw in the night visions and behold one like the son of man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days and they brought him near before him and there was given him a dominion and glory and kingdom that all people nations and languages all people nations 
and languages would worship him. And his dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away. And his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. Getting the point? Daniel saw glory, worshiping, everlasting kingdom given to the Messiah. Here, the Son of Man and Jesus apply this prophecy to himself. Jesus also spoke of the coming, of his coming kingdom in so many occasions. Matthew 13, 41, Matthew 16, 28, the author of Hebrews has always used the reference of the Son of Man in Psalms to teach that Jesus, the true Son of Man, will be the ruler of all things. So Jesus was fully God. He was also fully human. And as the Son of God and the Son of Man, He is deserving both titles. Hope it was a blessing to you.